G'day chaps, is I, Clumpager 139 Let's be real, Riddler is always the last villain you beat when going for 100%, right? I mean, if even the speedruns do it, it must be the optimal choice. Well, what if it wasn't? What if you were required to do everything for Riddler the moment you were able to? How much would the game change? How about we find out? The rules are not so simple. The instant a riddle, trophy, or physical challenge is obtainable, I must drop whatever I'm doing and collect it. The order itself doesn't really matter as long as I get them before continuing on the main quest. Now, what constitutes something being a part of the main quest versus just being on my way to a trophy is up for interpretation. So, for the sake of consistency, I'll have it be any time I go into a new area that would count as making progress or completing an objective. For example, I must collect every possible trophy in and before the loading bay before entering the smelting chamber in the steel mill, just as I must collect everything possible in the entire map before going into the museum to rescue Freeze. Those are the basic rules I'll at least try to abide by. But enough semantics, you all just want to see me suffering, right? Well, let's get to it then. If you want, you can also consider this a guide for every single Riddler collectible in the game. Because yes, I am going to go out of my way and explain every single collectible in order of collection. And in some cases, how I went about getting it if I did so in a rather unorthodox way. Let's start immediately upon our donning of the Batsuit. The very first objective of the game gives us is to go save Catwoman from Two-Face in the courthouse. But we can't do that, because Riddler has generously left 130 collectibles for us to get. No, I am not joking. Yes, I spent two hours furiously running around Arkham City to get them all before even engaging with our first objective. And yes, I am about to read through eight pages of gameplay before even starting the story. <sighs> Strap in, folks. We're in for a long one. Our collectathon begins by diving off the building and heading just to the left to crash through this barrier and grab our very first trophy. We specifically grab this trophy because it's right next to a combat encounter where we can get started on our far more interesting part of this run, the physical challenges. Alongside all of our collectibles, Riddler has enlisted physical challenges onto Batman that he must complete. And with the limited encounters across the overworld, we need to be careful to make sure we can actually get as many as possible in as few encounters as possible. Which is why when saving Jack Ryder from this group of thugs, we spend a lot of time doing seemingly useless moves to rack up our challenges. This incredibly weird encounter with a lot of skill issues is able to nab us three challenges and set up a few more for later. Using quickfire explosive gel in a combo five times. Using three redirected aerial attacks and using three different quickfire gadgets in one combat encounter. Just before leaving, I also destroyed the tiger camera right here, of which we'll need to destroy 47 more. So, try to keep count. I then grappled up to the bank and used the height to dive bomb onto this pressure pad to get this trophy. I then dropped down to these thugs to get a few more physical challenges started, including using the quickfire back claw in a combo five times, using quickfire batarangs ten times, and achieving a times five variation bonus in a single encounter. I then used beatdowns to take out the remaining enemies to set up for another challenge down the road. Next, I headed into the Bowery and crashed through this barrier on the elevated train to collect another trophy, starting our Bowery collection. This let me drop down into a big encounter where I could start wrapping up my physical challenges. I started by running around like an idiot so I could use the slide to trip three enemies. I then got my final beatdown finisher to complete that challenge, and built up a combo a little more to achieve a times 20 combo. This let me take down the last few enemies like normal, but specifically finish off the last guy with a quickfire batarang. This will be important later. Next, I hopped over this wall to collect this trophy with the two switches, then grappled up and destroyed this tiger camera at the front of the processing center. In this back corner, I then grabbed this trophy using a somewhat unique method you aren't exactly intended to. Normally, you use a line launcher to get between these switches, but we don't get the line launcher for a very long time in this challenge. But I knew from all the way back in my no glide challenge that there was a different way. Start on this switch down here, then grapple up to the switch on the building. Then glide down to the final switch, and the trophy is yours. Right next door on top of this building is a trophy where we need to just do some precise remote battering shenanigans, then another where we glide between these switches on opposing buildings, and one more just behind this wall we destroy with explosive gel. Detonating that wall also happened to bring some random thug over to me, so I used batarangs to take him out, once again for a later challenge. 
and of course, another camera down by the Titan container. I wanted to go down to the subway, but it's actually locked off right now, so we won't be getting anything in there for a while, thank god. But right down the way, there's a trophy behind this wooden wall, which attracts the attention of some enemies outside the museum, so I beat them up and finished the last guy with a Batarang to wrap up another physical challenge. This also let me go behind this gate and slide to grab another trophy, then glide under the dome to crash into this weak wall and grab the trophy behind it. Up on the elevated train, we grab another trophy by hitting these six switches, then throw a battering at this camera to get our third in the Bowery and earn a challenge. Before going for my next trophy, I landed on the ground and wrapped up a few more physical challenges, including catching a remote battering and using a fully boosted remote battering to send an enemy flying. I promptly ignored these inmates and a nearby political prisoner to do a very precise glide over to Riddler's hideout where there's a single trophy sitting in the back. I then got a very interesting trophy right next to it where you're normally supposed to use the line launcher to go back and forth between these switches or use the grapnel boost to shoot up out in this grapple point. But it's actually possible without either. If you position yourself right and grapple at the right angle, releasing your grapple just before reaching the top, Batman will be put into a glide, which allows you to move at just the right angles to glide onto the pressure plates and acquire the trophy. This is one of the few trophies you are definitely not intended to get at this point in the game, but we were able to cheese it anyway, so I see this as an absolute win. I begrudgingly saved the nearby political prisoner because he was in my way of this next trophy with the two switches, which we get with a remote Batarang. Another on a nearby rooftop can be collected by placing explosive gel on the switches and zooming in to detonate them individually. And one more can be gotten by blowing up a wall and crawling into a duct. Back down on the ground, I can use the back claw to grab this trophy on top of the horse, destroy another tiger camera, and grapple back up to grab another trophy on this pillar. Across some rooftops, I grab this trophy by sliding under some dangerous looking spikes, and drop down to grab this one with the back claw, since the container closes when you get too close. Below the glass ceilings, I destroy another camera, then grapple all the way back up to the top to grab this trophy above the archway. This sent me back to the alleyway where Penguin tried and failed to beat us up, where we get this trophy behind another breakable wall, and a second behind this gel wall right next door. I then realized in my speed that I had forgotten to grab the trophy hiding behind the giant TV screen at the processing center, so quickly doubled back and nabbed it before destroying another camera on the ground, earning me my next challenge. I then ran down the road to get another camera right here, and doubled back once again to get this trophy behind an explosive gel wall. Well, almost dying to some annoyingly placed mines, but don't worry about that, that doesn't matter. But since I survived, I could grapple up to grab this camera across the museum, and another by the bank from this pipe which got me 9 cameras total in the Bowery, earning another challenge. I then dropped to the ground where I got 3 cameras in quick succession, but don't think that's the end because this first camera was actually in Park Row, meaning I missed a camera somewhere in the Bowery. So I headed back to the museum entrance where I found the final camera and destroyed it, earning me the challenge, and some rare dialogue I'd never heard before. All the cameras in Sector 1 are down. For the moment, that'll wrap up the Bowery, but we'll go back for a bit of cleanup a while later. For now, let's start ridding Park Row of its neon green infestation. I start by destroying this camera, meaning I've gotten three, so complete another challenge. Then glide across from the courthouse to collect this trophy on the pressure plate. Dropping down into the alley right behind me lets me slide into this small alcove and grab another trophy. Grappling up presents four switches along the courthouse, which we prep with explosive gel and detonate, plus one battering to this one, collecting this trophy. On the other side of the courthouse is another set of pressure plates, which we glide into between buildings to collect this trophy, and this pressure plate which has us diving down into a hatch to collect another trophy. A little to the north is this puzzle with three switches, which we prep with gel and detonate to get this trophy. And then we hear a ringing phone. This phone, as I'm sure you're all aware, is being called by Zaz who, as it turns out, has some trophies in his hideout. But we can't acquire them until way later in the game. So we'll have to take his calls when we hear them, but we won't have to beeline for him right at the start of the game. Thank god. Before leaving, I collect a trophy behind a wall at the political prisoner camp, and destroy a camera just outside. Another two cameras can be destroyed watching the freeways from this building, but one of them was in Amusement Miles, so we don't get the challenge quite yet. But getting another two cameras from atop the church does give me the challenge, and gives me the perfect angle to hit this switch on top of this random building to unlock the trophy down from the ground floor. Back by Ace Chemicals is this trophy which you need to time a hit on the final switch, and this one with another trap door we need to dive bomb into, plus another camera outside Monarch Theater. Down the road is another remote battering trophy, plus a pair of cameras by these two-faced propaganda guys, which gives me another challenge complete. 
Just down the road is another camera, and the final one is back by the church, wrapping up Park Row cameras. We've lost all cameras in Sector 2. This, at least temporarily, wraps up Park Row, but again, we'll come back a bit later for some cleanup. For now, we head over to Amusement Mile, where we get this camera before doing the puzzle right next to it. Which is just a repeat of the earlier explosive gel puzzle, but with extra steps involving batarangs, giving us another trophy. I then glide over to the frozen pool to break this wall and grab another trophy, and before leaving, I break this camera to get me the first challenge. Right next to this pool is another familiar challenge from no gliding with these pressure plates. The final plate is just far enough that we can't reach it while gliding. So instead, we start on this center plate, then grapple up to the top plate before gliding down to the bottom to finish this puzzle and collect the trophy. A mere two feet away is another puzzle where we slide under this grate at the right time to grab this trophy as it flips down. Then we glide over to Maxi Zeus to break open this wall and collect another. Under the freeway is a quick remote battering puzzle, giving us another trophy. And then we grapple up to destroy three more cameras from this vantage point, giving us another completed challenge. Over by Ivy's lair is an explosive gel wall and another trophy behind it, plus this pressure plate with another trophy we can collect with the back claw. We then do a simple glide into this alcove onto a pressure plate to collect another trophy, and do the glide again into this wooden wall on the side of this GCPD to collect this trophy. On the actual GCPD, we grab this trophy under the stairs with the back claw, then head over to the back door to grab this trophy hanging upside down. Then we use this gargoyle to get a very precise glide into this cage with a trophy at the end, which is blocked by red pressure plates. Just above is another remote battering challenge, which is always annoying, but I get it on the first try because I'm a gamer. And while we're here at Cranko, we may as well head inside and collect this trophy behind the counter. But we don't talk to Bane because his mission is irrelevant to the story. Heading outside, I grapple onto this smokestack to do a perfect dive bomb and pull up at just the right moment to glide across the water for 30 meters, earning me another physical challenge. Yeah, remember those? Because there's still a few more we need to get, but we'll worry about them later. We still need to worry about cameras, like these two that I get from atop Maxi Zeus, which give me the perfect opportunity to also grab this trophy with the three pressure plates nearby. More pressure plates adorn these walls between Amusement and Industrial, which we can glide into and grapple up fast enough to grab yet another trophy. And since we're still on the topic of pressure plates, here's one more stupidly difficult challenge with them on the crane. You're normally supposed to use the grapnel boost to launch off this vantage point and grapple around, but since we don't have it, we're forced to do the same thing we did back in the Bowery. Grapple up and let go just before reaching the top so we can glide and perfectly dive bomb onto the pressure plates. It's difficult, but very satisfying to pull off. Right next to this difficulty is a Simon Says section, which is dispatched of rather easily, thank god. I then realize that I've gotten bored of what's supposed to be an amusing mile, so head over to the industrial district to start collecting things there. Starting with our next type of breakable object, balloons. The first of which we get from atop this crane, along with a camera. We then glide down here to break through yet another weak wooden wall and collect another trophy. Then, while in the midst of this completely worthless combat encounter, I accidentally throw a battering at this camera just off screen, followed by this camera intentionally to get the first challenge. Up on top of this tower, I can break these balloons by the ferris wheel, then go over to this pressure plate and drop down below to grab another trophy. Speaking of the ferris wheel, there's another trophy hidden up top inside one of the carriages, along with this perfect angle for me to snipe a camera and two more balloons giving me another challenge. Dropping down to the street, I can hit another camera right here, then hop this wall to get another easy remote battering puzzle. And walk a little further back in the alley to break more balloons by the water. Next up is yet another breakable wall for us to glide through, except this time we hit a pressure plate on the other side and glide back so as not to hit the red plates and delete our progress. And another camera right next to it for good measure, giving us another challenge. Now we head up to the roof of the steel mill to get this trophy where we throw a remote battering around to this button and destroy these two balloons, earning another challenge. From this super high vantage point, we start gliding out to the far edge of the city and collect this trophy in a hidden alcove. Then we glide back into this skinny cage to collect another trophy. Out in the steel mill's backyard, we can destroy these two cameras, then slide under this cage and who knows what the hell this is to collect a trophy hidden on the ceiling. On the roof just above is this spinning puzzle, which is just a game of follow the leader, giving us another trophy, and then we drop down in this hidden area for a quick puzzle that would normally require the line launcher, but which can be cheesed by just dive rolling between the buttons. On the other side of this wall is another camera, which gives us another challenge, and another trophy hidden under this excavating machine. 
And since I'm right here, I may as well go down into the sewers where I can destroy three chattering teeth, earning me another challenge, and collect two trophies. One using a remote battering and some electricity, and one just kinda sitting out in the open. That's all we can do for now, but we'll be back later, trust me. For now, let's grapple up to this nearby building and punch this wall to collect a trophy behind it. We get two more balloons from these high up locations, earning another challenge, plus one more set it from atop this smokestack. I then use this high vantage point to glide over 150 meters without using the grapna boost. Remember physical challenges? Yep, still there lingering in the background. Regardless, I use my endpoint to collect my next trophy behind this weak wall over here, then grab this camera on the bridge that's technically an amusement mile, giving me a challenge over there. I then grabbed another Nexus as his hideout before grappling back onto the smokestack to snipe these balloons and this camera with a remote batarang before jumping to my death to perform a vertical dive for 50 meters. I then grappled back up to perform one of the hardest physical challenges, gliding for 250 meters straight. You're supposed to use the grapple boost for this, but since I don't have that yet, I had to just keep dive bombing and hope I eventually got it. Thankfully, I got it on my first try while going all the way to Park Row, where I happened to see this trophy I left behind where you hit the switch to collect. On my way back to Industrial, I took the time to find 5 lonely enemies and perform knockout smashes on them, giving me the final physical challenge for this point in the game. There are technically 3 more that are available at this point, but they're impossible to get. There's nowhere to perform inverted takedowns because all vantage points are way too high up, and there aren't any throwables to return to sender or prematurely detonate. So, we'll have to get those later. Back to trophy hunting, we can collect this one near the sewer entrance behind an exploding wall, then head up to, onto this building and run across some pressure pads at the right time to get another, and glide down here to destroy another camera. Which is our final one for industrial. All cameras are down in sector 4. Right behind said camera is another running over pressure plates challenge, giving another trophy, as well as this weird one whose challenge I still don't know because I always just cheese it by rolling over it. I then headed to the steel mill's back door to get a single trophy behind this weak wooden wall, and if you think you're gonna miss this area, trust me, you won't for very long. We'll be back. But since that's a while away, we can head to the far end of the steel mill over the water to find this trophy in a little alcove. Then head all the way back over to the other side to glide into this alcove over the electric floor and collect another trophy. Then I headed back to the entrance of the district to find one more set of balloons, earning me the final destructible challenge while also jumping through these weak wooden barriers to collect another trophy nearby. By this point, I had also earned so many upgrade points that I was able to get upgrades that were tied to other challenges, including the shockwave and glide boost attack. I started by using the shockwave on this pressure plate to build up enough of a charge to activate this button and earn me another trophy. The dive bomb tackle followed suit as I used it on these two enemies to instantly knock both of them out and earn me another physical challenge. And with that, I had reached 120 challenges complete. So it was now time to start playing cleanup. We start by heading back to Amusement Mile with this pressure plate that's constantly shifting colors, and another two cameras just outside GCPD. Right on the border of it and Park Row is a really annoying puzzle where you have to hit all the switches when they light up, which isn't hard but it takes unnecessarily long for no reason. Then there's just one more camera across from the frozen pool, which gives me some more dialogue I'd never heard before. We've lost all cameras in Arkham City, surveillance systems are down. We're blind here. Heading back over to the Bowery, I remembered about a trophy on the other side of the fence from Riddler's Hideout, so quickly grab that, then run back to Park Row to grab this trophy under the car before I forget about it as well. I was just about to call it and head into the courthouse when I remembered about the two mine puzzles in Amusement and Industrial. Both of these are actually possible without the mine detonator. You can cheat the one in Amusement Mile by just casually walking over the mines, since you only need to detonate two to make it through, and will have just enough health to survive while playing on normal which I was. And since the game saves after you collect this trophy, you can just reload the checkpoint to escape the maze without having to go back through it. The other one in Industrial is even easier since you don't need to donate any mines to get it. Just walk through the maze and collect your prize. And with that, we have reached 127 collectibles obtained before even starting the main game. But for the record, I could have gotten 130. During the actual run, I did miss three trophies. One was right in the back corner of the museum roof that I forgot about because of the nearby Catwoman trophy, one in this little hut in Park Row that I forgot because of the remote battering challenge right next to it, and one was on top of the radio tower in Amusement Mile that I forgot about for really no excusable reason. I just forgot. So while I didn't collect them in the actual run, know that they can be added to our total. Regardless, 
That is a ridiculous 130 Riddler collectibles before we even rescued Catwoman from Two-Face. That is 33% of Riddler completed before we even started the game. And trust me, it only gets more crazy from here. As we enter the courthouse, we're forced into playing things as normal, except with a whole hell of a lot of upgrades so it's a lot easier, until we scan the bullet holes. Then instead of heading out, we actually head into the basement to nab two more trophies, one with a remote battering and some electricity, and one just hanging out on the ceiling. Thankfully, we're allowed to continue forward after this, as we don't unlock any new upgrades or locations by this point, so we can just go into the church and beat up Harley. But inside the church, we can actually obtain another challenge. Remember how we couldn't get the inverted takedown earlier? Well, since we're finally in a predator section and just so happen to have gargoyles at our disposal, we're able to nab one for free. These two guys don't move to the back of the room as fast as their buddies, so if we hurry with our grappling over to this gargoyle on the corner, we can actually get one of these guys with an inverted takedown before he gets into position, earning another physical challenge. After that, we can play the room out like normal, nabbing this trophy behind a breakable wall at the confessional as we do so. Then before climbing up the bell tower, we nab this one other trophy behind another breakable wall, and one final trophy at the base of the tower. We then head into the sniper perch where we listen to some Joker monologues, and we can head over to the steel mill. And although you wouldn't think it, there is actually a bit of work to be done. First, we now have access to the grapnel boost. So we complete the required AR challenges and obtain the gadget, giving us access to a few physical challenges. Second, since we completed the church, we now have smoke bombs. Surprisingly, smoke bombs are actually not available for the player to use until after you complete the predator section in the church. Which is really weird to think about since they're a starting gadget, right? But whatever, with them now available, we gain access to a few more physical challenges. Third, and least importantly, Joker has started to ever so slightly expand his turf from industrial into amusement mile. So there's a few balloons right on the barrier for us to destroy. There will be more as the story goes on, but we get the first on top of the bridge between the two districts, the second by these guys getting the food drop on the freeway, and the third a little farther down the freeway, giving us a challenge. Next, I headed over to the GCPD for no real reason other than to hear some dialogue, but in doing so, I actually got a phone call from Zaz, so decided to take it to get started on the quest. I also grabbed a few more balloons in Amusement Mile, one on the side of the casino and one on the Maxi Zeus building. I then glid around for a bit, making sure I didn't miss one, and remembered that I left this trophy in Industrial. So I used a grapnel boost to glide onto these panels and got the trophy rather easily. This was also the moment I realized I left the radio tower trophy behind, so collected that as well. At this point, I thought Zaz would be required for progression, so spent a lot of time gliding around while waiting for the phone call. I eventually got one to move the quest forward a little bit, and while trying to get another down the line, realized that I would need the line launcher to finish his quest and abandoned it. However, after finding this phone, I did notice that I could get a backclaw disarm upgrade, which would give me access to another physical challenge. Since I was in the Bowery, I grappled up to this building with three armed guys and used my new disarm tool to remove three of their guns, earning me the challenge. At the same time, I used a smoke bomb to disorient one of these guys shooting at me and perform a silent takedown on him to earn another challenge. I was on a bit of a challenge spree at this point, so headed over to the freeway to get a grapnel boost takedown on this guy overlooking these scavengers for another challenge. Then I headed over to this large group of enemies in Industrial and used a smoke bomb on them to make them attack one another, earning yet another challenge. While I was gliding around for phone calls, I also noticed the weak wooden barrier and shamefully collected the trophy behind it, which also should have been done earlier. Realizing there was no way Zaz was going to call at this point, and that I was an idiot for thinking you could complete his lair without the line launcher, I finally headed to the steel mill to get this arc of the game started. And we get it started right away by collecting this trophy at the bottom of the chimney inside a pipe. Then we're back to physical challenges because we're finally able to get the reflected projectiles in this encounter. We just need to stall combat for a bit while the enemies grab and eventually throw these crates at us, which we can reflect three times to complete the challenge. Then we just beat them up like normal and continue on. And we continue on into the loading bay, where we can't quite get anything yet, but in this next room we can climb up here and blow up this wall to get another trophy. Inside the smelting chamber, we take down all the thugs and obtain the wreck gun, which opens up just so much stuff throughout the game, starting with our new destructible, Harley Heads. We blow one up right as we get into gameplay in the office, then head into this vent to grab a trophy up here. We head down to the bottom floor where there's another trophy under this structure, then blow up another Harley Head in the corner. Then we're actually given access to the very back of the cooling tunnels, where we can blow up another Harley Head, giving us a challenge, 
and move this minecart with the wreck gun to get a trophy hiding below it. I very nearly forgot about this trophy behind another hatch back in the smelting chamber, so grab that before moving on. And here we have a small challenge. We have two new physical challenges with the wreck gun, and we just so happen to have a small group of enemies right here that are perfect test subjects for it. We start by electrifying this guy with a pipe twice to make him hit three of his friends to earn a challenge. Then we start beating him up and use five quickfire wreck shots while it, we have a combo to earn another challenge. But we're not done yet, because as it turns out, there's a chance one of these guys will pick up the fire extinguisher in the corner. And we need to be fast about it, but hitting it with a batarang will make it prematurely explode, earning another challenge. We finish beating him up, then destroy this Harley head before moving back into the loading bay to collect another trophy by moving these bumper cars with the wreck gun and crawling under here. Another Harley head is destroyed before we re-enter the main room and destroy yet another Harley head in the corner. Before heading up to the manager's office to confront Joker, we can actually head to the elevator to collect this trophy in yet another service pipe, but have to leave before heading down because we don't yet have the municipal codes for the crypto sequencer. We then use the wreck gun to tear down Joker's facade on the office, but before heading up, we actually use the hook to destroy this vent on the back wall and grab a trophy waiting right on the other side. And that marks all we can do in the steel mill for the time being. We won't be able to re-enter until way later, so say goodbye to all those trophies we missed for now. But we're now back outside, and with a new gadget at our disposal, we have a lot of work to do before going to the GCPD. Starting with this wreck puzzle right outside the mill to get a trophy, and this other wreck puzzle just below the radio tower for another. But in the end, those don't really matter all too much. Our big revelation is going down back in the church because Riddler has taken it over, and hidden away all the medical staff as hostages. Going in here is important because it not only unlocks riddle rooms, but also unlocks riddles. The first of which is the organ at the back, followed by Cash's family photo in this corner. Two down, and that is the church complete! So let's head out and see what we can do next. Well, since hostages are a part of Riddler's game, let's head to the courthouse and see what's going on there. In the meantime, we can scan Two-Face's guns for another riddle, unlock the Enigma machine, and go downstairs to scan Calendar Man's calendar to wrap up everything in the courthouse. Doing this unlocks another hostage, since we've got so many secrets at this point, but we're not going to get him quite yet. Right outside the courthouse is this wall we need to blow up, with a wreck shutter behind it hiding another trophy, and just around the corner we can scan Harvey Dent's old campaign office for another riddle. Just down the street is Ivy's plant shop, as well as the Tiger Confiscation lockup, giving us two more riddles. And while I was there, a phone just so happened to start ringing, so I took another call from Zaz. That call ended me up in the Bowery, so I went ahead and completed this wreck maze for another trophy, then went down to the ground to scan the hat shop for another riddle. Back behind the museum is another shutter with a trophy behind it, and back up on the rooftops, I used the wreck gun to make this armed guy start shooting and surprise his friend to earn another challenge. All the way on the ground again, I opened yet another shutter with the wreck gun to get a trophy behind it, then went all the way to the other corner of the Bowery to scan the Behavioral Analysis Unit. Can't open it yet because we don't have the tiger codes, but we'll be back. Back over in this area, I scanned the Puppet Shop, the Wanted Posters, Wonder Tower, Ace Chemicals, and Jezebel Plaza all in quick succession for five more riddles. Then did this super annoying wreck puzzle right on the border of Park Row and got another trophy behind yet another shutter. While we're here, we can also scan the Terror Poster and Crime Alley sign for two more riddles, then take a call from Zaz to further progress his side mission. The call in question takes us all the way back to Industrial, so we may as well start grinding out riddles while we're here. We start with the dead guy leaning on the phone and the hole where Black Mask escaped from, then use the wreck gun on the ghost train to move it into the perfect position to blow up this ceiling with explosive gel and get another trophy. Back at the front of the district, there's this explosive gel wall with another wreck puzzle behind it for another trophy, then I headed back to the sewer entrance for this trophy behind a hacking panel. We're able to hack Riddler panels now, but only Riddler panels, because we still don't have the municipal codes. But we do have Riddler codes. And this was the first of such trophies we can obtain. Another can be found behind this wall by Sazen's hideout, right next to this crane which we use a wreck gun on to collect a trophy out of the water. Then I went to the top of this smokestack to scan the giant green question mark at an unusual perspective, and went back down to scan these warning posters for another two riddles. We get another four riddles by scanning the Falcone shipping logo on Scarecrow's barge, and the other Falcone logo back under the Ferris wheel. Arkham Asylum way off in the distance, and this logo for Ratcatcher's company in the crossroads. Heading back to Amusement Mile, we scanned Scarecrow's old mask on top of the bridge, the Maxi Zeus building, 
and the Flying Grayson's poster for three more riddles. I also went ahead and scanned the toxic waste container outside Ivy's hideout while getting shot to hell by her goons, so that was a lot of fun. The collapsed freeway gives yet another riddle, and we use Riddler's codes once again to get this trophy on top of the church. Just behind the church is this tiger outpost with an electrified floor, which we use the wreck gun on to deactivate and collect a trophy behind this wall. And while we're in the area, we may as well save Riddler's first hostage. Then save the second because it's right around the corner, and why not? And despite all our hard work, we surprisingly don't have enough secrets to unlock the third, so we'll worry about her later. I then remember that I have some unfinished business back in the cooling tunnels, so head back there and destroy a Harley head, only to immediately leave again. And we leave to the cranes back in Amusement Mile to collect this trophy by using the wreck gun again. We also scan the bear on top of Crank Co. and the bat signal on top of the GCBD for another two riddles. Then we perform one of the tightest glides imaginable to get across this pond below the GCPD to scan Jim Gordon's parking spot for yet another riddle. I of course reloaded the checkpoint immediately after to escape the otherwise inescapable prison, then grappled over to this building to use Riddler's codes once again to collect this trophy. Back on the border of Park Row is this riddle where we have to bring down a shutter with a wreck gun and scan a question mark and an unusual perspective again. Another unusual perspective can be found at this pole in the courthouse giving another riddle, and just down the road is Strange's old business, which is yet another riddle. Back by the confiscation lockup is this trophy with another use of Riddler's codes, and all the way back behind the courthouse is Catwoman's home, which we scan for another riddle. Back in the Bowery, we can scan Sharp's campaign poster for yet another riddle, then use the codes again for these two trophies on nearby buildings. While we're right here, we can scan the memorial plaque for Arkham City, as well as the Moroni family restaurant for two more riddles. I then finally realized after interrogating some Riddler thugs that I forgot the trophy on the roof of the museum, so finally went out of my way to collect it. And after a lot of recon, I realized I had finally collected everything, and finally, finally headed to the GCPD. Well, almost everything. I did actually forget to scan Croc's little hideout in the sewers, and accidentally got it later. So, pie in my face, but add one more thing to the list. Before actually going into the GCPD though, there's one trophy behind this breakable wall that we don't want to forget. After taking down all these enemies, there's a few trophies we can get in here before leaving. We now have the municipal codes, so we can hack regular panels, starting with this one hiding a trophy in a cell. We then use the remote battering and some electricity to collect this trophy in the other cell. We'll have to wait and come back for the other two. For now, we head out and can start collecting even more trophies, because we have the Crypto Sequencer with all of its upgrades. And even get access to the Sonic Shock Batarang, which will come into play later. With those upgrades, we're first able to head, once again, into the back of the steel mill to get another trophy. Since we now have the range upgrade on the Cryptographic Sequencer, we can hack this panel from across the ravine and get the trophy with the back claw. And while I passed by it, I remembered that I didn't scan the croc riddle earlier, so quickly go into the sewers to scan it. Right outside the giant hole is also this trophy behind an explosive wall, which we also needed the crypto range upgrade to collect. Since we now have the municipal codes, we can also hack into this elevated train card by the museum to collect another trophy, and this other one in the back corner. I then grappled back up to these guys on the roof and used the sonic battering to take one of them out, earning me another physical challenge. And just like that, we're already set to enter the museum. So, let's go take down Penguin. Except that I'm an idiot and forgot to start recording my game capture. So, enjoy this seriously downgraded footage from my stream. Before we can even enter the museum proper, we need to fight off these knife guys. Then we can jump through this wood paneling to throw batterings at these three switches to get our first trophy of the area. Then we jump through this window and encounter our next breakable object, penguins. Which we throw battering at to destroy. But unfortunately, that's all the time we get to spend in the museum for now, as we've got some jammers to destroy. Fortunately, we haven't earned anything new, so we can skip all the way to our next new area, the subway. After taking down these guys to make sure they don't get in my way, we slide into this vent and blow up this weak wood floor to grab a trophy down here. Then we head a little further down into the station to this vent with another trophy behind it, and yet another trophy inside these grates here. And before heading down the tunnels, we need to scan Vicky Vale's billboard for another riddle. After breaking through this weak wall, we head right instead of left to collect this trophy hiding down here. Then we can beat up these guys and scan Solomon Grundy's poster for another riddle. We can also climb into the train car and switch on detective mode for another unusual perspective question mark riddle. 
Before heading into the Predator room, we can blow up this weak wall with another remote battering puzzle behind it for another trophy. Then we can finally take these idiots down and start collecting things in this room. We start by scanning the Santa Prisca poster for a riddle, then grabbing this trophy hiding in the vents, while at the same time using the wreck gun to open this cage with another trophy behind it. We grab yet another trophy just sitting out in the open in one of the train cars, then head towards the route for Wonder City to open this shutter and grab another. After disabling the jammer, we can also use the crypto sequencer on this panel to get another trophy, then break behind these wood panels to find another trophy back here. Yet another crypto sequencer trophy can be found in this hideout here, and we break through our 15th weak wooden wall to get a trophy behind it up here. Then just before leaving, we can make a quick pit stop at this panel to get yet another trophy with the sequencer. And with that, now we can finally enter the museum. And we start with a physical challenge that was previously unobtainable. Now that we have an armored enemy, we can use the wreck gun, with a little convincing, to send him flying into one of his buddies. And there's actually quite a few collectibles we can get in this area before moving on. Starting with scanning Scarface for a riddle and pressing the button to watch the puppet dance. Then we climb through this vent to destroy a penguin, and remember there's something to get here later. There's another penguin over by Batman Case giving us the first challenge, and a trophy all the way up on the scaffolding above the T-Rex. There's one more trophy behind this destructible wall you can barely see, and another behind this gate we need to hack open, plus a penguin right by it. In the hallway leading to the gladiator pit, we open this shutter to collect a trophy behind it, then scan this Cobblepot family portrait for another riddle. In the gladiator pit itself, after beating up a bunch of idiots and a titan, we can use the remote battering to destroy two penguins. One behind this fence and another inside this cage, giving us another challenge. With some very precise remote battering steering, we can direct it through this electricity and all the way over to this panel to open up a cage, giving us another trophy. We can also move the elevator up without us in it to expose this destructible wall, giving yet another trophy. And we can smash through this window to grab one more. At the top of the elevator shaft, we open up this hatch to grab just one more trophy before heading into the torture chamber to save the cops and confront Tiny. Just below the starting platform is another hatch we can open with the back claw for a trophy, then after saving the cops, we can use the grapnel boost off this platform to glide into the corner to grab this trophy up here. Then we head over to Mr. Freeze in the War Room, destroying a penguin and scanning Joker's hyenas along the way for a riddle. After saving Freeze, we can scan a trophy inside his tanning salon and scan the Abramovich riddle in the corner of the room. And because I almost forgot it, back in the chamber we grab the unusual perspective riddle by grabbing something with the back claw and turning the camera just right to get it. We then destroy another penguin and open up this shutter to hit the switch at just the right time to get another trophy. After taking all these guys down in the armory, we have to do some collecting. Starting with this penguin hiding in one of the display cases, giving me another challenge, and a second underneath the mammoth. Then we collect a trophy inside these grates, open up two panels with a crypto sequencer, and get two more trophies in the corner and under the bridge, and one more behind this breakable wall. And just before leaving, we scan these skeletons playing monkey see monkey do for a riddle. Now we go defeat Penguin and Solomon Grundy, and we regain high definition footage because I finally realized I wasn't recording. Now we need to go after Ra's al Ghul. But we have some collecting to do first, since we have so many new gadgets at our disposal. First among them is the Firearm Disruptor, which we can use before leaving the museum on this turret to get a trophy behind it. Upon leaving, there's a few trophies around the city we need to get in Tiger Outposts, starting with this one in the corner of Park Row, and another back behind the political prisoner camp. There would be others, but we still don't have the required gadgets yet. I then realized that I forgot another trophy back by the GCPD, and went over there to get it with another Crypto Sequencer hack. My bad. But as far as things that we can only get now, we can go over to this armed enemy in Park Row and disrupt his gun, then make him fail at shooting us for another physical challenge. And with that, we have 275 challenge complete before getting the line launcher. And that number is only gonna go up with this amazing gadget. Firstly, we head back to the museum to collect a single trophy in the hallway leading to the gladiator pit which we need the line launcher to reach from this vantage point. Collecting this trophy also makes Riddler concede and reveal the location of another hostage, so we'll be rescuing her soon enough. Back outside, I used the line launcher again to kick three enemies for a physical challenge, then headed up to this rooftop to redirect my launch five times for yet another challenge. Next, we can head behind the church to get this trophy where we need to line launch over these red panels. And before you can say I could just glide over them, you need to hit this pressure plate first, meaning you can't just glide. 
Under the Frozen Pool is another line launcher trophy where we need to stand on this plate and launch through these weak walls. And at this moment, I just so happened to receive another call from Zaz, so I took it and now only needed one more to finish his quest. Then I headed inside the GCPD to collect this trophy above the entrance that also requires the line launcher, and immediately left because there's only one more that we can't get until after beating Freeze. While I was waiting for another Zaz call, I went over to these armed guys and performed a line launcher takedown for another physical challenge. And then we finally got our final Zaz call, so tracked him down and found his hideout. Before I do that though, I went ahead and saved the next Riddler hostage, and this time we do have enough secrets to locate the next hostage. But I personally prefer saving Zaz's hostage to Edward's, so we'll head to him first. Upon stopping Zaz, we can scan his desk with the broker cards for a riddle, then do some remote battering shenanigans to hit this fuse box and unlock a trophy. There's another trophy back here, but we can't get it yet. Now we go save the next Riddler hostage, but this time we don't have enough secrets, so we have to wait a bit. Instead, it's time to finally head underground and resume our collection down there. First, we used a line launcher right here to collect a trophy on the other side of this ravine. Then we destroy some Joker teeth before crashing down to fight some thugs, which gives us another set of teeth to destroy. Now it would be time to go to Wonder City, but we can actually head all the way back to the subway tunnels, destroying a set of teeth and earning a challenge on the way. Back in this tunnel is a room with three trophies, which we use the line launcher tightrope to upgrade to avoid dying in. Now we can head to Wonder City, destroying another set of teeth just before entering. Our first order of business is blowing up this wall inside this room for later use. Then realizing I almost forgot a trophy and grappling up here to collect it. Then we use the line launcher to go to this small ledge, giving us access to this room up here with another trophy and a weak ceiling. Which we use to defeat all of these thugs. We grab this trophy across the ravine with the back claw, then go back to this small ledge to grab this trophy back in the room with the back claw as well. Finally, before leaving this room, we glide down towards the water and use the grapno boost on this ledge to break through the barrier on the ceiling and grab a trophy above it. Now we head into the Wonder Tower Foundation, and before actually starting the room, we need to use the wreck gun on the jammer enemy for another physical challenge. After that, we can take them out like normal and start collecting in the room. First, we scan the large globe in the center for a riddle, then head all the way to the bottom floor behind these wood panels to grab a trophy just out in the open. And at the same time, we have a new destructible, Demon Heads. We pull one down in the corner of this room, one above the entrance to Wonder City, and one above the elevator, giving the first challenge. We also collect this trophy behind a destructible wall before heading into Wonder City proper. After we beat up these ninjas at the third door, we need to destroy these two demon heads in the room. We also need to get a third right outside the giant sealed door, earning another challenge. Then there's a trophy inside this baby carriage, a riddle for scanning this Wonder City shut down sign, and another trophy just hanging out in this little room. One more trophy requires the line launcher on these pressure plates near the door, and a final one can be found behind this wooden wall in the back corner. Now we can scan the guardians and head down to the tunnel to find Raish. But before we do, we need to prep this switch with explosive gel so we can get this trophy behind a weak wall. Thankfully, we don't need to do any cleanup in the following room after achieving dead parents percent, because Batman himself is dying and we kinda need to solve that problem. There's nothing we can do for a long while, actually, as even after completing the demon trials, we're not allowed to use gadgets or the scanner, so even though there are riddles right in front of us, we can't collect them yet. But as soon as we beat Raish, it all opens up to us, starting with these two demon heads right next to each other, as well as these giant guardian statues we scan for a riddle. There's one more demon head just above the manhole cover, which we break to complete another challenge, as well as this riddle with Grundy's wanted poster, and this trophy behind a generator we use the wreck gun on. That's all of Wonder City for now, but we'll be back soon enough. Back in the subway, we've got ourselves another physical challenge. All we have to do is use the reverse battering on an enemy, which we got while fighting Raish. Then there's another set of teeth we can destroy on our way out, followed by another on top of the train car, giving us another challenge, and a third before going into this vent. After beating up all these idiots, we destroy another set of teeth and destroy the final set in the back corner of the subway terminal, giving us all the destructibles for the subway. Thankfully, we haven't gotten any new gadgets since first entering the subway, so we can immediately leave and go save Sharp. But now we have to go to the Iceberg Lounge to reunite with the cops and get the mine attachment, which of course gives us a new collectible for us to obtain. In the lounge itself, we first scan Penguin's Umbrella for a riddle, then destroy these two penguins in the corner, giving us the final challenge there. Back in the corner of the lounge, we scan these top hats for another riddle and detonate these mines to grab the trophy behind them. Now we can leave and head to Park Row. 
where we need to destroy some more mines back here to collect a trophy in this cage. And over in Amusement Mile, more balloons have finally started to spawn, so we get the first set on the radio tower, earning a challenge. Then over on the edge of Industrial, we find this cage where we need the line launcher tightrope to stall in the air so we can grapple up here for another trophy. This actually gives me enough challenges to unlock the final hostage, which we'll actually go save right now. But on the way, we destroy two more sets of balloons on the GCPD, a third on the casino sign, earning another challenge, and a fourth on the freeway. The hostages save lickety split, so we're back to collecting. First we destroy this set of balloons on the border of mutant and industrial, then we head back underground for a grand total of… one trophy. Yeah, we have to trudge all the way back to the very back of Wonder City to collect a single trophy blocked by a mine. We don't even grab anything else on the way back, the whole journey was for a single trophy. When we finally get back to Amusement Mile, we destroy our final set of balloons down by the water, earning our final challenge, and collecting this trophy down here which requires the tightrope and the wreck gun. And with that, we have a whopping 324 trophies before fighting Mr. Freeze. And once again, don't worry, because that number is only going to go up the more and more before Protocol 10 starts. We beat up Freeze no problem, and before leaving make sure to pick up this trophy in the GCPD morgue. When we get outside, we need to save Vicky Vale, and actually get a physical challenge by freezing one of the snipers and knocking him out with an Ice Smash takedown. And now we're back to collecting, and with our newly acquired Freeze Blasts, we've got a lot to do. Before anything else though, I go out of my way to save Nora so I can tell Freeze about her later. While I'm here, I also go to Zaz to collect this stupid trophy that should absolutely be obtainable without Freeze Blast, but just isn't for some reason. So I must collect it now. And since there are some enemies blocking the way, I use this opportunity to wrap up my physical challenges. Starting by freezing an enemy, then hitting him with a Batarang to knock him over, and then using 5 Quickfire Freeze Blasts in combat for 2 more physical challenges. This means there's only one challenge left, and we'll be getting it later. Under the bridge between Industrial and Amusement is this trophy that we needed Freeze Blast to get close enough to grab with the back claw. And underneath Crank Co. is this trophy we needed a Freeze Blast to raft for, and the Riddler codes to unlock. We then head back inside the GCPD to let Freeze know Nora is safe, but we won't go check on her for some time, so we need to do something else. Thankfully, there's a ton of trophies around the map we can collect with our new gadget, so let's do that! Starting with the most annoying trophy in the entire game in the back of Amusement Mile, where you have to ever so precisely move yourself on this raft and place gel on these switches with absolutely no room for error. It's really bad. But we're able to get it, so it doesn't matter. Also in Amusement, under the end of the freeway, is this tiger outcrop we needed a raft for, as well as the disruptor to actually get inside and collect another trophy. Heading over to Park Row is this trophy in the corner we need another freeze raft for, and this steam pipe near the courthouse we can freeze and crawl under for another trophy. There's another steam pipe near Monarch Theater we can slide under for yet another trophy, and then since I'm in the area, I may as well go ahead and start Mad Hatter. Because, yes, we do need to beat him for Riddler completion. After taking some drugs and beating up a milliner, we can scan the Alice in Wonderland book for another riddle. Next we head over to the Bowery for another steam pipe that we can freeze and slide under for a trophy, and then head into the museum to finally wrap it up. We head all the way to the torture chamber and create a raft in this corner to collect a trophy sitting on the water. Then go into the war room and armory to collect two different steam pipe trophies in the back corners. And that wraps up the museum with absolutely everything collected. So let's try doing the same thing in the subway. First we head to the border between it and Wonder City, collecting this trophy on the water with another freeze raft. Then head to Wonder City to do the exact same thing on the collapsed streets. There's also these steam pipes above the entrance blocking a trophy that I almost forgot about, and that's all of Wonder City for now. Back in the sewers is this set of three trophies we needed the Freeze Blast for to stop these steam pipes from killing us. There's also this trophy below the bridge we needed another Freeze Raft for, and that is all but one trophy for the subway, which is all we can do for now. Since we're back in Industrial, we can start with this trophy on the water on the edge of the steel mill, which we needed a Freeze Raft to open and this trophy near Nora's building, which we needed both Freeze Blast and Mind Disruptor for. And speaking of Nora, we can also go back in there and quickly scan her and Victor for our final riddle of the area. And just like that, we've collected everything we can for this point in the game, and we have a whopping 351 collectibles to our name. It may sound surprising that there are still 50 left, but don't worry. 
we've still got the entire steel mill and protocol 10 left to collect stuff. Because just as a reminder, we've collected almost nothing from the steel mill, so our collection is about to increase by a lot. After beating up a whole bunch of idiots, we create an ice raft and head into the cooling tunnels for the fourth and final time. Our first trophy comes from hitting this switch and line launching over, then crawling through a vent until we reach it. After beating all these guys up, we can scan the goth corpse sign for another riddle, while also destroying a Harley head, remember those, in the corner. We also destroy another in the next room to earn another challenge. There's a little outcrop on the ceiling in this tunnel with a trophy hiding inside it, and before heading further, we align another unusual perspective riddle. At the back of this tunnel is another trophy we can just barely get before being chewed up by the drill. This vent can then be pulled off the wall to grab another trophy on the other side, and now we have another of the most annoying trophies of all time. This incredibly tight remote battering navigation with electricity. But since I'm a gamer, I get it on my first try, and can collect another trophy. Before progressing, we also need to make sure to scan Harley's hammer for another riddle. Then we beat up a bunch of idiots in the smelting chamber. And even though we were here before, there's actually something we need to get. Since we didn't unlock riddles last time we were here, we need to scan Harley's diploma on the wall in this room by the exit. In the assembly line, we also have this trophy behind another steam pipe we need freeze blasts for. And just before we reach the loading bay, we can finally grab this trophy that's just been sitting here this whole time waiting to be collected with the crypto sequencer. Then after beating all these guys up, we can head into these grates to backtrack a bit and grab this trophy behind another steam pipe. Back behind this vent is actually a second trophy we needed the line launcher for to get over this pool of lava. Then, now that we have the sequencer codes, we can finally head down into the elevator shaft to collect this trophy under a weak floor. We also destroy this Harley head at the bottom of the shaft, then this other one after beating up all the guys in the basement. We then play shoot the penguin for a bit until we've destroyed all the penguins in this line, giving us another trophy. We also scan Joker's funny trick box for a riddle and destroy this weak wall for another trophy. This gives us one of the worst gadgets in the series, the Freeze Cluster, which finally unlocks our final physical challenge. Before we get it, we can't forget about this trophy inside the destroyed elevator. Then, we can use the cluster on these three guys inside the other elevator to freeze all three of them at once, earning the final physical challenge of the run. Now all we need to do is destroy the final Harley head in the manager's office for the final challenge there, and scan Harley's asylum outfit for the almost final riddle. And with that, we've nearly cut our remaining collectibles in half, as we now have 373 before going to fight Joker. After doing so, Protocol 10 starts. But since I don't really care about the not-so-innocent lives being lost, I just head back into the steel mill to collect my actual final riddle. We trek all the way back to the assembly line where we can find the Abramovich brothers sitting together, who we can scan to complete everything in the steel mill. Now we scan a bunch of helicopters until we find the one with the master control program, which would normally mean we're on our way to stopping Protocol 10, but actually means we need to go back to collecting. There's a bunch of panels around Arkham City you need the master controls for, so we need to go and get them now before doing anything about the helicopters. Over in Industrial, we can finally open this tiger outcrop with the master control to get the trophy behind it, and we can hack this tiger brain to reveal all the cameras we've already destroyed. But that wraps up Industrial, and we immediately go do the exact same thing over an Amusement Mile. Back behind the now-destroyed courthouse is another tiger outcrop we needed to hack open for another trophy, along with yet another tiger brain down the road from the Monarch Theater, wrapping up Park Row. The final tiger brain is super close in the Bowery, so we hack that, and then head all the way back to the Behavioral Analysis Chamber to hack it open with the Master Codes for yet another trophy. Now all we have left is the stuff in the Processing Center, so we immediately head there. After hacking this panel, we gain the unusual perspective necessary to scan this riddle, and at the bottom of the shaft is another trophy inside a hatch we need a freeze raft for. Beating up these tiger guards gives us access to this elevator, which we hack open it and collect a trophy behind, along with all the other rooms. Like this one with the dead tiger guard which we scan for another riddle, this weak wall which we blow up to collect a trophy behind, and this room we started the very game in, where we destroy a mirror and collect a trophy behind it. And that completes the Bowery, meaning we've finished all four main districts. All we've got left is a little cleanup work in Wonder City. And we start with a huge collectathon in the collapsed streets, with one trophy under this ledge we needed a raft for, one just kind of sitting on this ledge, one hanging by a rope which we cut and grab with another raft on the water, one behind a hacking panel, and finally, one more on the other side of this weak floor, which we get after hitting the switch. Yes, that was five trophies in less than a minute. Unfortunately, that speed isn't kept up. 
In the next room, after meeting all the Tiger Guards, we can hack this panel to get a trophy behind these bars, then head back up to the other collapsed streets to grab a trophy behind this other panel. Now we can start our climb up Wonder Tower for the final collectibles of the run. We start with a demon head at the top of the elevator shaft, then after beating up these guards, we scan the plaque on the edge of the tower for a riddle. We then shimmy along the edge of Wonder Tower until we reach this trophy, and farther up we find another demon head to destroy. Then you can climb onto this cage to find another trophy just kinda sitting there, then we struggle to get the most annoying riddle in the game, aligning this stupid question mark in mid-air. It takes me a few tries, but I am eventually able to get it. Then I realize I'm stupid and that the final demon head is all the way back at the bottom outside the elevator entrance, and I need to climb all the way back up the tower. But upon destroying that demon head, we've completed another challenge, and that finishes up Wonder City. And if you've somehow been keeping track of all this chaos, you know that that means we've finally done it. We've collected every single Riddler collectible in Batman Arkham City before even stopping Proto... Call 10. Thir 399? I'm sorry, are my glasses out of date? Am I reading this right? 399? Th that number is supposed to say 400. 400. W what, what happened? I was supposed to collect everything, game. Yeah, about that. Remember when I said that we have one trophy left in the subway? Well, here's where it comes back into play. I didn't forget anything. I really did get everything that was available the moment I was able to collect it. But there is one singular trophy you aren't able to get until you beat the main campaign. This trophy is unobtainable until you defeat Clayface and see the credits roll because Rocksteady thought of every possible contingency to keep you out of here. It's locked by the master control panel, meaning you can't unlock it until you get the codes during Protocol 10. But you aren't able to enter the subway during Protocol 10 at all, because they're locked off, and they're locked off to keep players from getting to Wonder City without going through the processing center. Okay, well, why not get it after making it to Wonder City? I mean, there's a path leading there, right? Yes, but Batman is not allowed to leave Wonder City once he enters. If you try going through this door, Batman simply won't allow it. So, you've gotta play through Stopping Strange and Protocol 10. Okay, well, what about after? Can't you go there before saving Talia? Well, the game actually has two contingencies stopping you from doing that. Not only is the entrance still blocked off like in Protocol 10, but the game won't let you stray too far from Talia without giving you a game over. If you don't follow the signal, the game just fades to black and gives you a game over. So, yeah, there is no way to get this trophy before the end game, without using glitches anyway. And honestly, I just gotta applaud Rocksteady for the dedication, making sure there's no way Riddler can be completed at the wrong time. What I mean is, there's no way to finish Riddler's quest in the middle of important plot points. Imagine if, while you were climbing up Wonder Tower, you suddenly got a notification that Oracle had tracked Riddler down. You'd be super ecstatic, but there would be no way for you to go after him until after you beat the game. So, cutting off a single riddle to ensure that doesn't happen was a really smart move. While at the same time, giving the player so much freedom throughout the game to just collect whatever the hell they wanted, whenever the hell they wanted. It's honestly really impressive that they allowed you to collect all but a single trophy in this game because it just goes to show how much thought they actually put into every single trophy location. So with that, I begrudgingly made my way through the rest of the game, and eventually made it back to the subway to hack into this panel and collect my final Riddler trophy. Now I could have just left well enough alone and ended the game, but there's no way in hell I was letting Riddler off the hook after this challenge. So I made my way to his hideout, snuck through the ticking time bombs, and punched him square in the jaw to finish the quest. And with that, I had completed Batman Arkham City while hard focusing on Riddler. This challenge was honestly a ton of fun, and one I'd kinda recommend trying yourself if you think you know enough about the Riddler locations in this game. With that in mind, do all the YouTube stuff, because now I need to do the opposite challenge. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later chaps. Do I need to press the button? What? No. Oh, 
You'll pay for this, Batman. You sure this thing won't work? No. But there's no point in letting him know that, is there? <laughs> 